Today I'm going to show you how to install and set up a waterproof temperature sensor that you can use wherever with ESP Home and Home Assistant. Parts you'll need is one or two of your Dallas sensors. I'll be using two. You will need one of these 4.7K ohm resistors. I'll also have a link down below. And then you obviously need your ESP board. And you know, you might need a USB cable to flash it. And then I, I will solder be... right to the ASP, but I'm going to be using some of these jumper cables that I'll cut and then solder on to the Dallas temperature sensors. And then I'll be putting it on a little project box if that's something you want to do. You will need a soldering iron to solder this all together and any other some miscellaneous tools for whatever you might be doing with it. So I have my sensors here, and the first thing I'm going to be doing is since these are using the same input, I can solder them together. And don't worry, if, you put a, if you're using two and you put them on the same input, they will like register as separate temperatures. It's not like the same temperature, so you can use them in two different spots and have them on the same input. So I'm going to solder all these together, and then you need to put the uh, resistor in between the data and the positives to make this work. So I'll solder that all up, and then I'll show you. Okay, so I got it all soldered up. There's my positive and negative with the resistor in between, then the black, and then I have my pigtails or whatever here to go to the ESP board. And now I'll wrap all of these in some tape or something so they don't touch, obviously, and short out or anything. Okay, I got it all taped up there just a little bit so it won't short out or anything. So now we're ready to move on to getting all the software flashed on the ESP and getting all these hooked up. So the pins we are going to be using on the board here, if it'll focus, yep, there we go. Okay, I'll flip it around. We're going to be using D2, which will be GPIO4, uh, and then we're going to use 3.3 er, volts, and then we're going to use ground. So those are the three that these will hook up to. The data will go to uh, D2, red will go to, you know, power uh, positive will go to 3.3 volts, and then the negative will obviously go to the ground. So that's what we're going to do next. Your should look something like this once connected. 3.3, ground, and then D2. And that will be what will be in my little enclosure where you can just hang it on the wall. I don't care. Okay, so now we're on the computer, obviously, on Home Assistant, and we are going to start making the configuration for this. So I'm going to add a new device, and then I will name it. I'm going to name it uh, Aquarium uh, Temp ESP. And then the network name is the name of your network. And then your password. Continue. And then you select what you're installing on. I'm just doing on an ESP8266. Obviously, there's other things you can install it on. Awesome. There we go. I'll copy this in case I need it. And then we will install it. So how to install it? Um, you can plug it right into like your Raspberry Pi or your server, whatever you're running it on, right into one of the USB ports. As you can see, if I click that option, it shows my Combi 2 and then my Z-Wave stick. So you can do that. I'm going to do the manual download and then use ESP Home Web because it seems easier. So modern format, it'll download it. Okay, so now I'm going to go to ESP Home Web, which I'll have linked down below. This is what it looks like. And then to use this, I purely, all I did was connect my ESP8266 to my computer using a micro USB cable. You just have to be certain that the micro USB cable you're using has a data pin in it, or like a data wire, so this actually works. It's not just like a power cord or something. Okay, so I'm on ESP Home Web now. I'm going to hit connect. There it is. Hit connect install we've already done all these steps we can just choose our file there's our dot bin open install your esp board might flash at you might not i've had them do both just depends on the board i guess i don't really know why earlier if it never gets past the connecting step on this page um, try a different USB cable because sometimes they have little blockers in them that don't let like don't allow things to be flashed through them So that was my issue and then I tried a different cable and now it's working just fine where instead it was just staying on the connecting screen forever and ever and ever Awesome, so it says configuration installed we can hit close So now we can go back to ESP home. We can see it is now online. So that is great 
So now we're going to go in and edit it some more. So now that we're in here, we're going to want to start adding all of the data. So on the ESP Home website, you can see their Dallas temperature sensor. And we're first going to just do this piece because it's it gets a little more complicated since we have two sensors. We have to figure out the address of each one individually. So I'm going to copy just this part right here. We're going to go back over here. We'll put it in. We'll put it in right over here, I think is fine. And then we're going to save this. And then we're going to install it one more time because, oh, actually, no, first, sorry, I lied. First, go back. We have to change the pin. And since, if you look on this board here, since we're using D2, it's GPIO4. So that's what we want to change it to. So we're going to go back here. We're going to go GPIO4. Awesome. Now we can save it. And then we're going to install it one more time. We'll do it manually again. You can do it a different way. But this is how we are doing it, modern format. Okay, so now that's done that, we can download it one more time. There it is. Oh, it already downloaded it again, but I did that again. Okay, go back to ESP Home Web, connect to it, install, and choose the new one. So that one, that one's the newest time. And then install. Okay, so now that we added that and installed it to our board using ESP Home Web again, now we can go to logs, and then since it's connected, it's online, we can do wirelessly. And that'll tell us right here, it shows both sensors and it shows the address of both sensors. So I'm going to copy that, so when I need it, all right, and I'll paste that into a um, notebook. Okay, I paste it in there, so we have that. Awesome, so now we can go back in here and now we can start adding the rest of the individual sensors. So I'm going to copy this. Go back to here. I'll paste it right here. And then our we'll take one of the addresses because we don't know which one is which yet. So we will just take one of the addresses. Uh, we'll take this top one first. And we will stick that right in here. And we will call this. So I'm going to have the reason I have two sensors is like I said before, one's going to go in the tank and then one is going to go in this uh, sump. So I'm just going to pay. So I'm going to call this one. I uh, will do the aquarium first and I'll just have to figure out which one is which. So aquarium temperature. And then we'll copy this again, but not the sensor part. We'll make it go down, boink, boink paste and then we will get the other address paste it in right here and then we will call this aquarium sump temperature so now those are both named perfect so you should have your pen and then the sensor so we can save that and we will install it again. Um, we should be able to do it wirelessly now because it is connected to the internet. So we will see if that works. Okay, so it's done now. We can stop because it's closed. And now it's all set up. So now we just have to add it into Home Assistant. So that's pretty easy to do. You need to go into settings, devices, or you can go to notifications. New devices discovered. Check it out. And then there it is. Configure. Yep. Uh, and then the encryption key, which hopefully you copied. If you didn't copy, we can go to back here. We can go here. Um, show API key. Copy. Close. And then go back. Paste it in. Submit. Perfect. It's all set up. We can go here. And there's our two sensors. If you want to figure out which one's itch, uh, it's pretty easy. You just can wrap your hand around one, see which one heats up. Or you can blow on it. And then you can see that's that one because it heated way up. So there you go. It's all set up. Now we'll go back to the physical side and I'll put this in a box and I'll show you it all hooked up. Okay, so I got it all in the box. I have my two sensors going out one of these wire glands. I have my power cable going in one of these wire glands. And I have my three things hooked up. Obviously power, and then I put some more tape on that just so it doesn't touch any of the prongs on here. 
So here's my whole little box now, all ready to go. And now we can go stick it on the tank. Okay, so here it is all hooked up. I have one temperature sensor that's going down into the sump tank, and it's right next to the heater, so I get to know what that temperature is. And then the other one goes up, it goes out the hole in the wall, and then I have it on the other side just drooping into the tank there, so then I have the tank temperature.